Hi class, I'm getting excited about painting our landscapes and we've done, uh, as you look on your screen, we've done some formative and summative worksheets to get us ready. We've studied different styles, different artists that do landscapes. Um, down here is some new information. I have a how to paint like Monet slide and actually you can download it and it opens up like this. Um, this is an artist and his name is Will Kemp and he loves Monet too. So he actually made how to paint like Monet video tutorials, like a part one, a part two, and a part three. Um, I have them on here, but I also save those links separately um, underneath this slide. So if you want to, you can also look at it. So what, when he talks about Impressionism, he talks about it as being um, people still loving Impressionism. Back in the day um, when Impressionism came out, it was actually created by the artist Claude Monet. He's considered the father of Impressionism. And Impressionism was originally an insult, huge insult. They said, this painting doesn't look done. It's an impression of what you see. It looks sketchy, um, doesn't look complete. So Monet and Renoir and Degas and Pizarro and Sicily and uh, other artists too were like, they wanted to show their work. They, um, they tried to put it in uh, different exhibitions and it was not accepted. So Napoleon at the time thought, you know what, okay, we're going to put you in a special salon for your exhibit, and it's called the Salon of the Refused. So, and they're like, okay, well, we're going to do it. We're kind of rebellious. We're trying to start this new style. We're using little brush strokes. We're using um, everyday subject matter, um, not just religious subject matter or wealthy patrons, but everyday subject matter outside, little strokes of color to look like reflected light. So they had a whole uh, exhibit of Impressionism at that Salon of the Refused, and people loved it. So people still love Monod Monet today. Hey, that rhymed, right? So you can see different Monet paintings right up here. That, again, was the very first Monet um, Impression Sunrise. He's had different, um, his, he actually flooded part of his property in Giverne, which is in France, and made a lily pad garden. He would paint the same thing over and over again, meaning the subject matter would be the same. He painted this during the day, in the morning, in the fog, in all these different time periods and different times of day. Um, he painted the poplars like this one and this one. So the subject, what it is, is the same. Poplar trees, poplar trees. Um, but the thing that's changing is the composition and the colors. All right. So this time it showed four trees in the composition. This time it only had three trees in the composition. Um, he's got uh, Monet paintings. I have a whole book of Monet paintings and they're water lily paintings and some of them are as big as a huge wall in your house. So it's not something small. All right. He uh, had a Japanese bridge that he had over his flooded uh, water lily garden. So again, he was very much into painting outdoors, which was pretty much unheard of. He says, no, open air, meaning I want to be outside in the air um, painting what I see. So anyways, he does a great job. Uh, this video, in fact, I'm gonna open up the link so you can see it a little bit bigger and have better audio. But he's gonna talk about how to start to paint um, on canvas or paper and talk about paint. And then what we're gonna do when we look at after that is get started um, on my example of my painting. So at this time, I'm gonna scoot this down so that was actually that slide right here. Here's the how to paint like Monet uh, video part one. I definitely watch it. So let's get that ready. You can watch part two and part three on your own. What I like about this is you can pause it when you want to open it. And let's get ready for how to paint like Monet. Morning, class. I'm looking for more than school. In this lesson, we're going to do a Monet style impressionistic painting. We're going to use brighter of colours than we've done in the past, so you can really get the grip with how Monet painted. Very quickly, very impressionistic, with acrylics. It's a really simple exercise. All you've got to do is click the link below. You can download the image direct from my website to paint it on the home. All the colours are listed there, the brushes that I use. Really hope you enjoy the lesson. Let's get started. This is part one in this free impressionistic landscape lesson. 
showing you how to paint in a style similar to how Monet painted. So the first thing we've got is a coloured ground. A coloured ground is just when you've painted over the initial white or the initial raw canvas, just so you've got a colour to work on top of rather than just painting on top of white. This will help you a great deal because it will be easy to judge the different tones, the lightness and darkness between objects. And because of the image that we're using, it's got quite nice, bright colours underneath. Any little gaps that we leave, this colour will shine through. This is a yellow ochre underpainting. Mono used a variety of different underpaintings. Here's were probably a little bit more muted than this one, but for this particular scene, I found that the yellow ochre with a nice warm colour is going to work perfectly for us. Now what I'm going to do is just put out the colours that we're going to be using for this painting. So what we've got here is a titanium white, which is like a modern equivalent to lead white, which is what one of the use. Lead is quite toxic, so titanium white is not produced, so it's not as harmful when you actually paint with it. We've also got a cadmium yellow, we've got a cad red light, a crimson, this is a permanent alizarin crimson. We've got a green here, this is just a, a permanent green light, which is quite close to an emerald green. Again, the original painting that Monet would have used, the original colours, aren't used anymore. So often you'll find that paint manufacturers make a version of those paints, and these are often labelled with the word hue. I'll just show you here on this paint. It says cobalt violet hue. The hue denotes that the paint is made up of a mixture of other pigments to create something very, very close to an original cobalt violet colour. We've also got a cobalt blue, an ultramarine blue, and a cobalt violet. So this demonstration is using acrylics. So acrylics will dry a lot quicker than oils, which is what Monet used when he was painting. But it will still give you an idea of some of the techniques that you can use and how you can mix the colours to get that nice impressionistic feel into your painting. Because he often painted outdoors and sketched initially for his paintings, I'm going to show you how to approach it quite quickly. So what you do is you block in the actual painting you're working on. We just try and cover over this just to give our eyes an idea of the different parts of the painting. So I'm just going to dilute the brush just with a bit of water. The brush I'm using is just a hog brush. This is from Jackson's Art in the UK. So to start with, I'm just going to wash in the sky just with the cobalt blue. Notice how watery I'm using it, just to give us an idea of where to start with the painting. To start to see what happens is what's called optical mixing where you get uh, the paint of the mixing with the colour underneath it. We're going to be covering this over, but it's just something to bear in mind. Often when you're working in thin layers to start with, you know, just washing the paint in, kind of like a watercolour technique really, the colours won't be exactly as they would be when they're finished, and especially not when we add white to them. This is just to give you a, a feel for getting used to working with acrylics, just so to see how easily you can brush them in. I think it's a bit lighter towards the back, I'm just going to add a touch of the white. What I like is that you could actually see his drawing, too. And then the mountain here has got a very, very slight green tinge that goes towards this end. So we're just going to start with the cobalt blue to start with. I 
think it's on this side, I'm just going to add in a touch of this green. So it goes with this lovely kind of turquoise colour. As it goes further towards its left hand side, I'm going to start to add a bit more of that green. So we're not worried if we go over the edges or if it looks a bit wrong to start with. This is just the first layer, the first kind of just kind of blocking in the painting, just to get a feel for how everything's going to work together. What you find when you're painting, when you just mix a fresh colour, and you paint it on an area of your picture, what's very handy then to do is to scan the rest of the image just to see if there's any elements of that colour anywhere else in the picture. The image that we're working from, I can start to see all these little blocks of colour. They're just all around the piece. And what this helps to do is bring the viewer's eye around the whole painting and you start to get a feeling that you haven't just got the sky in the foreground, but the whole painting is all working together as well. Now the other parts of green that we've got here, they're a lot brighter than this, they're a lot um, more yellow, so I'm just going to add a touch of the yellow to them. If you have trouble mixing the readings, and they often be a real issue when you're painting landscapes, if you have a look at my video, How to Mix Green, you'll start to see how the different blues and the different yellows that you mix with them can make a really big difference getting the right green that you're after. So click above to see. Okay. So I'm going to scoot this over to here. All right. So um, again, that link is here. And he also has a part two and a part three, there might even be a part four. So the big takeaway from this is really realizing that um, we don't have to always paint like Monet, but what we do want to do is learn how to start to layer our work. Now this is the uh, picture that I had. In fact, some students have asked about PixArt and how should, how could we really do this? So this is my iPad. Um, let me go to my PixArt. In fact, I love PixArt so much, I even put it on my phone. Kind of got a weird glare right now. When I do this little plus sign on the bottom, I could go and, let's see, this is the original picture. And again, it was a really uh, high water. It was churning. Let's see if I can get a good angle on it. Hang on, I'm going to set it right here and get the light. I know, it's getting closer. Okay, here we go. I'm on my way. I think that'll help you see the picture. Oh, there it is. Yeah. All right. So uh, typically, I have my picture in there. I go to effects. So it's not just changing hue and saturation, but when you go into effects, you can start to choose all these different uh, filters that can give you ideas about what colors you might want to paint. So, I don't know, I kind of like, I kind of like the splash right down here. I don't know if I care about this up here. What is staying the same is your subject matter. It still has the beach, it still has the boulders, it still has the leaning tree. The subject matter is everything that you see and that's the same. The composition is the same too because everything's in the same place. So that hasn't changed. 
So the thing that's changing is the color and the textures, which gets exciting because it gives you a different mood. So let's go to another filter. And again, I'm in FX. And ooh, totally different kind of feel again. I don't know if I like that one as much. Maybe I want to go down to this one. And you're saving at least two or three different ideas. Ooh, that's actually kind of fun too. All right. The one I think I actually grooved on the best was this one, and I saved it. All right. So again, you can work with different apps. It doesn't always have to be Pixar, but that's a good one to start with. So again, it's almost starting to look like a painting already. I can almost see the strokes of color and the layering and stuff like this. So from my iPad, I actually printed it out because then it would uh, have better exposure. So here I have my picture. One of the things you need to do when you have your picture is practice, all right? With a wider brush, I practiced with different colors. I did a yellow, I did a yellow or almost like a golden color and into this oxide color because I knew I was going to need colors like that. So that's why I practiced doing some of those blends. I also practiced a brown umber into a cadmium orange into that same gold color and did a three layered blend so you can kind of see what that would be like, especially if they overlap. That'd be something that I'd probably need like right here. So it's helping me practice my colors. I can do this with a sponge or the tip of the brush and learn how to work with different textures. You can go like this or again, sponge, paper towels. Short little strokes and long strokes and changing up colors might be something that can do with leaves or grasses. A press stroke is actually this when you actually press your paintbrush um, and make little patterns. That's how I made this little leaf or fern, but little press strokes. So it's not just long strokes or short strokes, but actually pressing to make a pattern. And this one is just using your colors and thinking about overlapping. So um, this is something that you actually photograph. It's part of your uh, summative worksheet to get you ready. So you're getting summative points to get your, um, your ideas ready and get this practiced as well. So here comes the fun part. I already put some acrylic paint on an ice cream bucket lid. That's one of my favorite palettes. And I put it in here. Did you notice I had air in there? To put air in there, I had to go like this. Feels a little odd, sorry. I blow into that little hole and I can put air in there and my paints would be good for at least a week, all right? And I did switch over to acrylic, but you could use tempera. So I'm going to take the bag, move it out of the way. So <clears throat> I was drawing the other day on this, and I love to draw super light, all right? But when I start to turn on the camera, sometimes, even if I don't want to, I have to go over my lines and make them oops, a little darker. All right, so some of them I drew a little darker. Just like Monet, I had a background tone. In fact, the paper is a background tone. Um, and I'm going to start at the top. I could paint the whole thing one even color, or I can start painting from the top down. Depends almost like what you have time for. All right, so you can grab your colors. What I like to do is have a little scrap piece of paper handy just like when I was doing my color wheel, but I like to practice my colors. In fact, I like to hold it up to either my iPad or my picture and start to see if I can get it pretty close. I love that challenge. So I am taking some of that titanium white. I think I have a phthalo blue. I might add a little yellow. And I like the, the hue but I think it's a little dark, so I might have to make that a tint and start out with some light. Now I'm gonna check it out. And that's pretty good. I'm gonna load up my brush. Now you can do a couple things. I can paint right over all the branches and see a little bit of a pencil line. 
which I think works fine because I can still see my lines even if you can't totally see them. All right, or you can carefully just paint in that negative space. It's up to you. I like to be able to cover over and go like this because then I think that I'm going to have a good mark um, and a good good design. So I don't mind painting over my color, my pencil lines, because I can still see them. All right, so that's what I'm doing. I'm working in my background. I like to go side to side. And I'm looking right here, and I'm actually comparing. Sometimes I actually leave my finger on my my resource material so i know i'm not going to invent anything i'm actually wanting to paint what i see and again it doesn't have to be wonderful your first layer i'm just using a little brush you could even use a little bit bigger brush i like a flat brush for this but you could use a round brush so this is my first layer it's going to come way down to about here before I can start putting in some of these darks. So I have to go back over to here and layer. But again, it's not one and done and think you have to have everything perfect that first layer. Because really, you don't need to do that. You get to layer and layer and keep layering your colors. Once you get your darks in, my darks will probably start right here. And then you can start painting that next layer. So I'm going to keep my finger here. I'm going to slide it over so you can see it. And this would start to indicate all the way where some of that next uh, shoreline is over there. So again, uh, working from the top down, starting with your layers. I want it to get a little bit warmer. So I could actually add a little bit more of a green into it too. My greens and my blues. It's actually, again, atmospheric perspective or aerial perspective, meaning you get gray far away. You're starting to get that really far away depth. And eventually I'm going to get into some of these color changes. It looks like I'm going into like a, um, a red-orange all the way down to a tint. And then it can slowly go into those blues. I could paint here for hours. So I'm going to enjoy this. I'm going to keep layering. Eventually when I'm ready for my tree, I can find a brown that I like or I can mix. And right now i got to wash my brush. If you're at school, you get these paper towels. But I don't think they work as good. Sometimes I even use my own from home. A good way to make... Um, a brown, if you don't have a lot, is a brown. You take yellow and violet, and you can start to get some very nice golden brown, brown tones. So again, that goes into the color mixing, and I can add a little more purple, and I'm starting to get some of these nice uh, warm kind of brown tones. This would be something that I would find. Oh, let's see, where would I find that tone? Oh, all the way down through here, all the way this color I'm actually kind of excited with because this could start to be some of the color in the right direction of when I paint my bark. I'd see that color here. That's why I said you can overlap. I would see that color all the way through different places too. So again, I like mixing browns, not just squirting it out of a box. Uh, a, uh, container but I just like mixing when I mix a brown again I like to use purple and yellow and then you can keep layering your colors and then a second coat but that would be for there for my bark and I can also see a lot of those colors down here when I get to it so again test your colors um, have your picture ready have the confidence uh, comes from all this mixing all right so um and then test your colors so work on a palette save your paints in a bag uh, i typically work from the top down just like monet would do a base color and start then layering um 
You can work from your iPad, unless you have a color printer at home. I never had ink, it seems like. Test those colors and make sure that you're trying to get as close as you can to your color mixing. And it's going to be fun. Your due date's coming up. It's already in Schoology. All right, so I just hope you are enjoying it. Uh, landscapes um, are good. Um, if you're doing a cityscape, you can do that as well, meaning with buildings or um, cars or whatever. Try not to have too many people that distract. All right, enjoy. Get a hold of me if you need something. Okay, thank you.